Hey everybody, Dan here from Sherp ET. Went to the family farm and explored some ice conditions and also went across some brush and just had a good old time. Hope you enjoy it. I probably should make sure the drain plugs are in. Always interesting to take that first venture out onto ice and wondering if you're going to break through or not. It was a warm day. It was about 50 degrees Fahrenheit out. It was crazy. This winter has been miserable. Hardly any snow and the temperatures have been excessively warm. Uh, this pond that I'm at is a private pond. It's very, very mucky. It's not that deep. The only real fish that live in here are bullheads. There is some snapping turtles in here that we see occasionally. I love watching this ice, how there's kind of like a wave that just goes just in front of the sherp. It's really cool to kind of see how the cracks form as you kind of push through. This side of the pond, the ice is probably only maybe an inch or two thick. And again, it was so warm out, it wouldn't have held anything. There was a couple of times throughout the day that I thought I might be able to actually pop up onto the ice, but it just wouldn't hold us. Again, the Sherp can actually go on about the same ice as a person can walk on, uh, maybe even less when those tires are especially deflated a little bit. Thought I'd throw in a little bit of slow motion just to see that ice. To me, it's just mesmerizing. Hope you enjoy it also. The Sherp has been running absolutely fantastic. I think I've got all the little bugs kind of worked out right now. And as I learn how to drive it more and more, I'm starting to understand when and when you should not do certain things. Granted, she's only got 44 horsepower, um, just a little bit over 100 foot-pounds of torque, but you can wreck things when you are really stuck on some big obstacles. It's crazy how long those tires have lasted. They haven't wore out at all. And again, the truck's about four years old. stable these logs are but I was thinking the ash that's up there I don't know but if I I don't know how to get there yeah, without wrecking right. it what if we just get here and I went back out again and tried to come this way okay yeah that could work yeah get me over on shore there it looks like the geese have been walking lots of tricky issues to deal with in places like this. So you got the ice to deal with, making sure that the ice is not preventing you from turning because you can't turn if you just broke right through the ice. Second thing is, is the only way that I've ever gotten the Sherp stuck, shall we say, is to have the center of the Sherp be wedged on something uh, from the front to the back or the back to the front. In other words, not side by side because typically the tires will hit it and you can wiggle off of that. But if it's right down the middle, the tires are just not having enough grip, especially if you're not touching the bottom to pull it off of there and you're stuck. What else can do something like that? Absolutely incredible. Only if you're brave enough, you could try and back over it. But I am sitting on a log here. And it's a little sketchy because the log is moving as you're doing that, even though I'm pretty far away from you. I'll have to admit, I was a little bit concerned. Some of the gaskets that I have around the outside of my door are starting to get war. And when you're at crazy angles and the water gets up to those gasket levels, some water does get inside of the sherp but I did not have one drop of water in the bottom of the Sherp from this entire day. So that was pretty cool. Kind of surprising.
You know, I've had this shirt for almost four years now, and I've been to this pond every single year at all times of the year. And it was kind of interesting that I did not see one bullhead or one turtle. And clearly the pond did not freeze out this year, so I don't know what the heck was going on. The shirt makes everything so simple. That doesn't seem like hardly anything at all, but it was scaring the dickens out of me because I didn't know if I was going to get on up or We did a little bit of playing in the woods and also did a little bit of playing on some logs. This particular hill right here is extremely steep. One of the great things about the Sherp is, is how efficiently it turns from one way to the other way. So these trees, I mean, are very tight together. Oh, wow. um, and uh, she does really well. Julie's such a trooper. She climbed down into that mess to try to get me uh, driving over that, or through, whatever you want to call it, that tree. Chirps just put a smile on your face. What else can do things like that? Nothing. Makes it look easy, huh? Again, a pretty steep hill that I'm coming down right here, but you put that chirp into first gear and just let off on the accelerator and the torque just lets it handle that situation just fine. In the event the Sherp started to tip forward, what I would do is, you know, plop onto that clutch right away or push that clutch in and hopefully just be able to roll through it so you wouldn't flip over forwards. But that didn't happen in this case. With just a little bit of encouragement, we got Julie to go out there and give her a shot driving the Sherp her first time on the ice. I'm trying to figure out what the heck's going on and, and I honestly think that this part of the video is pretty cool. You really get to see the way that that ice reacts to that chirp. Again, it is really shallow over, uh, excuse me, it's really thin ice on this side of the pond. But she did extremely well. Just uh, basically let the chirp do what it kind of wants to do. Don't try to turn to the right or to the left because it doesn't do that very easily because the side of that ice is hitting the side of those tires. Just look at those, it's almost like icebergs that are breaking off. Very, very cool. You can kind of see that ice is a little bit thicker out there. It's probably two or three inches, but again, it's 50 degrees out and it's way in the afternoon. So this ice, got, ice has got basically no strength at all. you were going that way. Huh? I thought you were going that way. I was, but it's kind of redirected. 
one of the things you have to be careful about with the Sherp is having a stick kind of point towards you that can kind of like spear the bottom of the Sherp. At the end of this little clip here, you hear that kunk? That kind of scared me a little bit, but fortunately nothing happened. Well, it was overall an incredible day. It was good to get that Sherp out again. I haven't been able to use it that much because can weather conditions, again, just have not been beneficial, in my opinion. I didn't want to go out on a lake that was not really that frozen, bust through, and annoy people who might have an issue later down the road and fall through the hole that I just created. So I really stayed away from lakes this year. Um, I'm going to try to get on maybe a lake or two in northern Wisconsin uh, later this year when uh, it's pretty much too late, kind of like this pond was. It's not going to wreck anything. So I will be doing that very soon, hopefully going up to uh, Hokum, Wisconsin. That's one of the places that I enjoy the most. I often wonder what people think about when they see a pond like this that has been broken up by, well, a shirt in this particular case. I bet you they really wonder what the hell happened out there because it looks like complete chaos when you are completed. Again, you can always tell uh, when there's mud up on top of the ice that the water is not that deep because I'm brushing against the bottom. And again, this stuff is so mucky that it's very, very easy to disturb it. I think that is an absolutely beautiful shot. The pond is pretty much done. Hey, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and take care.